everybody, welcome to A Culinary Journey. I'm Luca Paris, and today we're going through a culinary journey to Spain. Well, not the Spanish with the heavy flavors and spices that you might think of, just simple peasant Spanish food. I love Spain, I love the flavors, I love chicken thighs. Shows up on this show. We're gonna make a romesco sauce with tomato and roasted peppers and a little bit of spice to that to go over a salad. We'll do the chicken thighs over some lemon and, and herbs. And we're also going to be doing some simple button mushrooms to start off for dinner. So an appetizer, a salad, and an entree all coming up. And our culinary journey to Spain starts now. Hey everybody, welcome back. So I'm starting our culinary journey a little early because I'm going to prepare some lemons for these, this baked chicken, this Spanish baked chicken that we're making. And what I'm going to do is just get a couple of lemons in a pan. It's going to go underneath our chicken. Now, what I like using is chicken thighs. So let me, let's come on, let's slow down. I'm going to cooking too fast. Let's start from the beginning. I'm going to make some chicken thighs, give it some spice, some fresh herbs, a little salt and pepper, real nice and simple with lemon. We're going to bake that off in the oven. What I'm also going to do is do a romesco sauce. Now, a romesco sauce is roasted peppers and uh, roasted roasted peppers and roasted tomatoes. We'll puree those together with some almonds that I'll toast up. We'll get that in a blender, and that's actually going to make our dressing for our green salad. We'll put some green olives in there, and then we'll uh, put some anchovies on top. Real simple. And button mushrooms. We're going to take some mushrooms, quarter them, salt, pepper, little herbs in there, really quick and easy, a little bit of lemon. If you haven't had lemon with mushrooms before, you, get, you have to try it. It's absolutely wonderful. And that is our Spanish feel. Most people, when they think Spanish food, they go and think of all these spicy items or peppers or uh, spicy sausage or you know, things like that. Well, it's not really that. Traditionally, it's all about what's the flavors that are available. And it's fresh flavors. It's very reminiscent to other parts of the Mediterranean, whether it be France, Spain, uh, well, I did say Spain twice, France or Italy, or even if you go to the Eastern Mediterranean. And I love cooking Spanish food. This might be something you've really, you've seen more than once. All right, let's get our pan on high, because we've got to get our chicken in first. That's what's going get to us, get us going. We'll get a little oil in the pan. Let's make sure we, we're going to get a nice sear. Now, this is where I, I cheat a little. A lot of the times you'll find these recipes, um, they'll say to you, well, you want to just put them in a, in a roasting uh, pan and get them into the oven and let them cook for 45 minutes or so. What I like to do with these is actually sear the top of the chicken. What that does is two things. One, it gives me a little more crispiness. Let me get my pan a little bit cooler. I get talking, get excited. I get my pan too hot. And you're in control of your pan, so make sure you get to take care of it too. So what I like to do is sear my chicken and sear the skin in with a little seasoning. So we're going to season each one generously and then we're going to get those into the pan and start sealing. There we go. Oh, beautiful. All right. Some of them don't have a skin on it, but that's okay. Salt and black pepper. I use the kosher salt. If you've been watching my show, you know why. I love the way the, the flavor is. If you could get sea salt, those are great also. I'm using boneless chicken thighs only because I don't like doing all the work and getting around the bone. But the bone in, the bone, the chicken thighs with the bone, <laughs> it's easy for me to say, are the ones that have a lot more even flavor. They take a little longer to cook, but uh, they have a lot more flavor. There we go. So we leave all the fat on. A lot of people tell you to trim off the fat, break it down, clean it up. You know what? That fat's going to break down and give us some nice sauce and drippings into the pan later on, we don't need to break that down. We want, we want to keep that all in there. Fat equals flavor. Always remember that. It's my mantra. Fat equals flavor. So we'll get rid of some of this. 
and we'll go on to our next step. So while those are searing, and I'm going to season the other side just a little bit more. While those are searing and then they're going to go into our pan, I'm going to break down my herbs and get them on my lemon wheel. So basically, what I'm doing is going to put fresh herbs underneath each of the uh, chicken and onto the lemon wheel. While this is cooking in the oven, the lemon will start heating up from the bottom because that's the part of your pan that heats up the quickest and then it'll start imparting flavors. So it's kind of doing a little double duty. That's why they say, originally when I found this recipe, I found it to be, hey, just put everything in the oven, put the herbs on the lemon, it'll create all that flavor. Really, I think the sear is gonna help. It's my little uh, thing I want to impart into the recipe. The sear is gonna help, and then you do all those great flavors underneath with the lemon wheel. Look at that. It's going to look pretty afterwards, too, because I'm going to put the lemon wheels on top of the chicken when we serve it. All right, see if we have enough there. Oh, these are going to be fun. They smell great already. I'm sorry you guys don't get to see this or smell this at home. We're going to work on Lee getting Cheshire TV to be the first smell of vision on TV. All right, so we're searing one side. We'll get this up a little bit higher. We want to get a nice sear. There we go. Now, why do you sear? A couple of reasons why we're searing is one, we want to get a caramelization on the side that has that we're searing. Two, we're keeping the juices in. You do this when you do beefs or, or roasts or anything like that. It's great to pre-sear your roast. To get, you'll be able to keep more flavor inside the meat. And what's the other one? Because it's fun and it makes it quicker as we go in the oven. All right. Uh, while that is finishing, we're going to go over here and take a step over to start our romesco sauce. Now we're not going to finish it right now, but we'll get it started, get those items in there. I'm going to finish searing these and pop these in. So here we go. Romesco sauce. Really easy. I'm going to use some fresh tomatoes. Now you could use plum tomatoes that are from a can, or you could use fresh homegrown tomatoes. You could grill them. You could roast them. You could do whatever you want to them. I'm going to start with my peppers in there first, then my plum tomatoes. And what you put in there is what the flavor that's coming out is. I kind of like the plum tomatoes. It's going to add a little bit of freshness against the roasted red peppers. Kind of a little bit of a balance. Um, we're going to put a little bit of cayenne pepper in there. One, uh, two garlic in there. And a little salt and pepper. That's going to get us started. And we're going to cut some lemon juice to put in. This is a really easy, great marinade or sauce or topping for chicken, for fish but it's going to make a great salad dressing for us today too. So we'll get those on. Let's go over here and check out our chicken. All right, yeah, we're getting a nice sear on that one side. If you really wanted to, a lot of the flavors that I'm giving you now for the chicken and for the roasting in the oven, we could actually do totally in the pan if we wanted to. We could add the lemon, we could add the rosemary, we could add the thyme on the pan, but it'll, that'll give us a different feel. So we'll get our chicken on here. Some of it's not going to be totally cooked. That's okay. Oh, this is going to be so yummy. And I'll get the other pieces of chicken in. And we'll season that. And while these sear, we'll get our salad going. And then we'll come back and we'll do our mushrooms. All right. A little salt and pepper. Chicken thighs. You, if you don't do chicken thighs at home or you never did or you keep saying, I don't want to do them, they are probably one of the best things to impart flavor into a meal for what you're paying for them. You know, great, it's not a steak or anything. You know, that, that's always gotten lead down that I don't do steak. The chicken thighs are the filet mignon of the chicken in my world. I just love the way they feel. I think they have so much more flavor and they stay juicy all the way through. They make great salads the next day too. So, boom, let's get the top off of here. Because we want to drizzle some olive oil into our mix and if I, Look at that. There we go, a nice romesco sauce. What I'm going to do is let that sit. We're going to come back. I'm going to finish off the chicken. We're going to toast some almonds, add it to our romesco, get our mushrooms started. Boy, this Spanish dinner is coming together pretty nice. Don't go away because when we come back, our travels through Spain will continue. Hey everybody, welcome back. So we have our chicken in the oven. You remember that? We pan-seared some chicken, put it in the oven, we put it on some lemon, fresh herbs. 
We started our romesco sauce. I'm going to add an ingredient to there where we're going to add some almonds. So I have some unblanched almonds or blanched almonds here that we're going to toast up. Dry pan on medium heat. We're going to put the almonds in there. Now, when you're toasting almonds or toasting walnuts or any, any type of uh, nut, what you need to make, remember is not to add any oil or anything into the pan. You just want the nuts to toast themselves. And their natural oils will start giving it a coating and start bringing it to the temperature you need to. But important, do not walk away. All right? I've burnt many an almond in my day by going, hey, I'll be right back for those. So just put a little bit in a pan. That's all we need for there. And you can toast them as you need them. It's a great way to keep them. I keep all my almonds and walnuts and whether pecans in the freezer also. And then when I take them out of the freezer, I just I toast them up a little bit and they're ready to go. Sounds good? Easy. Nice. So we have our romesco while our almonds are toasting. Back here, I'm going to get our mushroom started for our appetizer. And basically, I'm just quartering white button mushrooms. Um, again, that's another thing. It's, you'll find a lot of button mushrooms in Europe, uh, in the Mediterranean. There's a variety of great, amazing mushrooms. But what they can do with just the simplest of flavors, something simple as a white but button mushroom, and just putting, again, a few ingredients, getting out of the way, letting the food tell you what it wants you to do, is it's so fun and flavorful. I mean, this is all we're going to do. We're going to add some lemon, some parsley, a little bit of garlic into this pan. I got to get some oil in the pan while I'm cutting this. Where do I put my oil? Over by my romesco. I need people just to direct me over here. All right, give a little bit of toss to our almonds. Just keeping them, you know, just keep, again, keep an eye on them. Make sure you're doing something else while you're doing that. Not something that's taking up too much of your time, but just enough. And then we're going to, oh, that's too big. Let's get a couple of small ones. With our oil over there, we're going to hand crush some garlic. Just get a, a crush on it. Now, a couple of different things. When you chop garlic real fine, what it's going to give you, the garlic is going to give you, is this sharp, pungent flavor. When you crush garlic, it's going to give you a toasted, nutty flavor. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the garlic out. A lot of European cooking or Mediterranean cooking, garlic is essential in the flavor. It's not essential as an item that's in the food. You won't find a lot of um, Mediterranean sauces that leave the garlic in. They want the garlic flavor in there. So we're going to do a simple, we'll take that out later. And for people who like to enjoy the garlic, they could have it later. My father-in-law being one of them. He'd have garlic ice cream if he could. And we'll season our oil and our garlic and start getting our mushrooms in there. And this is going to be really quick. Now the, the, gar the mushrooms, I, I've never thought about cutting them up just like this to make a, recipe, to, to make a mushroom dish. My, I tend to like to slice my mushrooms or if they're small enough, leave them whole. But to cut them in quarters like this was really new when I saw this dish. And it inspired me to do it again. And I just love, they just have so much meatiness and they hold together well. And they're a great carrier of all the flavors. They bring all those flavors to the forefront. OK, looks like our almonds are just about there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just this kind of light golden brown on some of them. And just enough of that essential oil kind of toasting up is a real big difference once you toast your almonds versus just going straight and eating a raw almond or a blanched almond. We're going to taste some fresh parsley for our mushrooms. OK. And I'm just going to do a quick rough chop on that. Now one of the things too, when I, when I do fresh herbs, I like to have whole herbs and then cut them down as I need them, right? And by doing that, what I'm, make sure that's off. Yeah, I forget to turn things off in the kitchen sometimes. This is why I need my wife usually around. Shut that off. <laughs> so the, uh, what it, when I chop herbs fresh, what I'm doing is I'm bring, bringing out their flavors right when I want them. It's not something that they're going to be chopped and sitting around. Right? You get those flavors right away. Again, it's all about the oils. That's what's going to carry the flavor. And I'm able to carry all that flavor right now. So I just chopped some fresh parsley. And we're going to give that a toss. And then we're going to just let these mushrooms brown, give it a good amount of olive oil. That itself is going to give it a lot of flavor. Always find a good olive oil if you're doing a simple sauce like this. When you're talking about doing a a sauce that's going to take time and cook. You don't want to really use olive oils for it. You could use a, a blended oil, or you could use a corn oil and olive oil blend, or you could use just corn oil by itself. So where am I? Oh, a little lemon juice into this. 
You're going to love this dish. We'll just drop in the lemon just for good luck, okay? All right, let's get back to our salad. And we'll get you out of the way, move you over. And we'll get our almonds in there to give our dressing a nice amount of crunch. We'll get that going. So, this is where we are. We have a dressing working. We have mushrooms working. We have chicken working. I'm going to bring it all together when we come back with manchego cheese, olives, anchovies, and a whole bunch of great stuff. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. So cooking is almost done. Time for plating. Got a couple of things to work on right now that I need to, to show you. First, let's show you those mushrooms, right? Look at how well they cook down. I got that lemon in there. Really got some great flavor. Those are going to go on the pan. Those, those are just going to be another second. They're ready to go. We're not cooking them down so they're totally brown and, and gone. You just, you're still going to get a... Huh, I'm just admiring them. <laughs> no, so good. I love mushrooms. I, they're just incredible. Now, for our dressing, now our romesco sauce. Remember I told you at the beginning, a romesco sauce is roasted peppers and then a roasted or a tomato and a pepper. Then we take some almonds into there. We put a little cayenne pepper so it's got a bite, right? And now, if you're making a true romesco sauce and you wanted to thicken it, what you use is dry bread if you want to. And uh, using bread or breadcrumbs thickens it. I like it the way it is. And secondly, we're making a dressing out of this. So what I'm going to add instead is a little bit of vinegar to it. So we're going to add some red wine vinegar. We'll turn that on. Just a touch, just to give it some acidic balance. There you go. That's all I need and my dressing is done. So there you go. Dressing is done. Let's get that into the salad. Let's get some greens into our bowl here. What are we going to use? What are we going to use? What are we going to use? We'll use this. Use fork. Why don't we split them up both ways? Well, there was a little too much in that one. Now I'm going to make a mess. Oh, no. All right. Let's just get some greens in there. We'll mix in some of our dressing. There you go. Look at it. And it's real, it's thick, but not, but it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, this is gonna be so good. Because we're not done yet with the salad, because we got more stuff to go with the salad. I'm gonna add some toppings to it. So let's get all nice and dressed, coat it all, all nicely. If you like, if you're if you prefer to put your dressing on top and let it kind of do its thing, that's fine. Remember, this romesco sauce wasn't meant to be a dressing. It was meant to be a sauce. And you can top anything with it, including, and we might even do it today, we'll kind of bring that flavor straight to our uh, chicken a little bit. That would be yummy. All right? On that, we're going to add some anchovies. Can be omitted if you don't like anchovies, you know. I know some of you are looking at me going, oh, you ruined a perfectly good salad with anchovies. Yeah. Well, welcome, welcome to the Mediterranean. We ruin everything with anchovies. Some of us think we make it better. And then we're going to take manchego cheese, sheep's milk cheese from Spain. Uh, let's see if you can't find manchego. Cheddar-like, yeah, a little bit. You might want to find something else. Um, a drier or a Romano cheese, a Pecorino Romano cheese from Italy, which is a little more accessible, is great too. We'll just grate that right over the top. You can put shavings on. I love this. It's just got a little bit of bite to it, and it goes wonderful. And then we think olives, and we think Spain. The easiest one are like these manzanella, these queen manzanella olives from Spain. They're stuffed with pimentos. And look at that. That's our salad. Looks good. I'm liking this already. Let's put a little more dressing right on the top of that. Kind of garnish it. Look at that. Now, I love this. is the favorite part of my of the show. Here we go. Let's get our mushrooms here, and we'll get those on a plate. There we go. That was the easiest one, right? Some fresh parsley, mushrooms. You got it. And finally, woohoo! Finally, we get our chicken on the plate. I have a, another bunch in there and what we've created with the chicken, the, some of the stock from the chicken ended up into our lemon. Now if you could check out this sauce that comes together. I don't know if you could see it from over there, but this sauce really, really came, 
came together where the lemon cooked down, the herbs cooked down. And we get that right on there. So I put it in the oven about 400 degrees for about 20 minutes after we started that sear process because I wanted it to kind of even sear a little bit more in there. And you knew I was going to do this, didn't you, when I was talking about it? I just put a little bit on the side in case somebody wants some sauce. Oh. <sighs> we just flew to Spain, had the best time, and we came back. And this, it's not better than this. It really isn't. Simple flavors, done quickly, done easily. If you brought people over your house tonight, you'd have a great time with this. So enjoy the flavors of Spain. I hope you had a good time. Um, I'm going to dig in. Got to find a fork. Found the fork. I'll see you guys next time on A Culinary Journey.